Hi, I'm Delusion Dispeller. Now I'm going to be talking about the victims. And since I said the videos are called haters and the victims who love them, it's only appropriate, I feel, to have the acrostic this time for the victims be lovers, L-O-V-E-R-S. So that's what I'm going to be talking about. What is it about you that made that narcissist possibly come towards you? And again, not an exhaustive list by any chance or possibility. There could be many, many reasons why the narcissist chose you. But these are some of the common reasons why I believe narcissists choose their victims. Lovers. Somebody that loves people. They're L. Lonely. Needy. They are willing to put up with almost anything just to have that special friend. I know I was. I had just come out of a really bad relationship with a woman that had borderline personality disorder, some neurological disorders. Um, I was very much in a caretaker type role, not physically. I wasn't there taking care of her. She lived in a different state. But I was emotionally the one that she kind of leaned on. And spiritually, I was her pastor. I was her minister. So when that ended, I was devastated. I didn't know how to pick up the pieces. In walks Anita, the rescuer, the savior. The person that, um, as we said in the other video, was the helpful one. Okay. So I was lonely. My best friend was gone. She wouldn't talk to me. She took me off of all her lists online. Everybody that knows about the internet knows how that feels. So I was lonely and needy. And this person came into my life and said, you know what? I want to take you under my wing. I want to be the person to help you. I want to be the one to comfort you through this really sad time. I can't believe she treated you that way. Well, in the end, this person treated me, I wouldn't say way worse, but probably equally as bad as the first person did. But I was lonely, so that's what L stands for, lonely. If you're lonely, maybe you came out of a divorce or a broken relationship, or you just never had any friends. Perfect prey for the narcissist. They love that. Easy prey. O stands for open. Are you the type of person that just bears your soul because you feel trusting of people? Or maybe you just don't care, so you just tell all. Narcissists love that because you make it so much easier for them to learn what triggers you and to prey on it. I mean, narcissists are always looking for narcissistic supply. So if you put yourself out there and tell them all about your life and how this person hurt you and that person did this to you and this happened and they're listening, they are studiers of people. They know exactly what it is you need to hear from them. They know if you need a, oh, well, I care about you or I'm there for you or I think you're really special. I think you're an awesome person. I don't know why they treated you that way. You really don't deserve that. They are watching and listening very, very attentively to learn what your triggers are, to learn what buttons make you perk up and be happy and feel valued, and they will prey upon that really easily if you are an open person. So be careful when you first meet somebody how much you tell them, and I'm a prime example of that. I tend to bear my soul with people, and I'm learning better to not do that quite so readily, although I still fall into it. I just trust people a little too much sometimes. Virtuous. V stands for virtuous. That means you have values. You have things that you stand for and things that you probably won't back down for. And that offers a challenge to a narcissist. They like to test those little things. In fact, Anita actually said to me, I bet I could make you back down on that value if I say the right thing. All I have to do is say this or that and you'll jump through my hoop. You'll do whatever I tell you to do. She out and out told me that and narcissists often will tell on themselves. So be listening. And when you hear something that sounds too good to be true, or you're going, did they really just say that? Run the other way, because they really did just say that. Okay, virtuous. So, uh, let's see. I can't read my own notes here. The narcissist hates things that are good, because they can't attain that goodness. So they envy that in you. They want it, but they have no clue how to attain that. So they try to destroy it because they can't have it. And if they can't have it, you shouldn't have it either. Um, empathic. I've had a lot of people come to me and say, I'm an empath. I absorb the energy in the room with people. Okay, I'm not going to debate that. To me, I 
don't know that I agree that that can be possible, but I'm not an empath, not to that extent. Um, I've never heard of that. I think it's very crippling if you really are able to do that because if you're feeling everybody else's energy, where's yours going? I mean, is it being just overwhelmed with everybody else's? That's just not healthy. I'd say um, talk to a therapist about that or something. I don't know what the healing method is for if you absorb people's energy. When I say I'm empathic, I don't mean I'm an empath in the sense that I can't be in a room with people because it just overwhelms me because their energy is so strong. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when I see somebody that's hurting, my heart breaks for them and I want to comfort them. Or if I see somebody that fell on the sidewalk, I want to go and help them up. Or they, okay, for instance, I was at work one day and somebody dropped berries all over the floor. The containers just split open and rolled. I sat there and picked the berries up. I didn't care. I mean, yeah, it was my shift, but I was going to help that person. I'm empathic. I care. How would I feel if I dropped those berries and there's people walking by? It's embarrassing. And it's, it's upsetting because you have to stop what you're doing and pick up all these little tiny fruits on the floor. <laughs> so I was going to help her. I'm empathic that way. So narcissists love to prey on empaths because they don't have empathy. And they're fascinated by it. I think they try to study it, but yet they also disdain it. They look down on you like you're a wimpy, wishy-washy person that has no backbone. R stands for reactive in the victim. Again, uh, you're easy to read when you're reactive. If they say or do something and you're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you said that. That was like so rude. Well, they delight in that because they know, aha, this is what's going to trigger her to be embarrassed in public if I say this. So if I want to control her, I'll just threaten her with, well, do you want me to tell everybody, blah, blah, blah. They know how to manipulate you. They are very, very good at it. Many of them have had years of practice from the time of childhood on up. Um, and yes, I know narcissistic personality disorder is not usually diagnosed till later in a child's life, like probably closer to the teens. But honestly, I have seen some children that years later became narcissists, and you could tell when they were children that there was a starting point of that. So if you're reactive, the narcissist knows if I do this, or if I say that, she's going to react this way. And they do it purposely because that's just the type of vindictive people they are. Okay, sincere. That's our S for lovers. The narcissist will be able to get answers from you that they don't have to second guess. They will ask you questions because they know you can't bear to lie about things, and they will use it against you. He doesn't ever have to wonder if he needs to uh, dig further because you're offering him or her everything that they need. So they love it when you are sincere and truthful. Anita used that against me in asking me, if I thought she had problems with affection and hugging because she knew that if I said she did she could be upset with me and then use that against me by not hugging me by not giving me affection as a friend or a person while she was giving other people affection creating sadness, rejection, jealousy and envy in me which obviously was a projection that she was looking for so, yes, if you are the type of person that, you know, is sensitive and bears all and is truthful and sincere, they love that because that just gives them another in of narcissistic control. Um, so that definitely describes, in my opinion, the haters and the people that love them. And hopefully that offers some insight into your situation. On the next video, which I'll call my conclusion video, I'm going to just talk candidly to you all who are in these relationships or have just gotten out of them because I think I need to say some things and I'm hoping that um, you'll receive what I say with the attitude that I mean it in, which is caring. So stay tuned for that last conclusion video. Thanks for watching.